Okay, section 2.8, we're going to talk about inverse functions. And we're going to look at inverse functions from three points of view, using tables, graphs, and algebraic formulas. We're also going to look at what are called one-to-one -one functions. Let's start off looking at tables. First question is, which of these tables defines a function? The answer is, is this a function? No because you have x equal 2 getting two different y values. So you have 1x going to two different y's. These last two are functions. But it turns out a new definition. A function is 1 to 1 if for every y there's 1x. So although these last two are functions, this one would not be considered a 1 to 1 function because you've got the y value 0 that has two different x values. 3 goes to 0 and 4 goes to 0. This last one, though, not only is it a function, but it's a one-to-one -one function. It's a function because for every x there's one y, and it's a one-to-one -one function because for every y there's one x. Anyway, let, let's, let's take that last function, and, and what, what's nice about having a one-to-one -one function, you can actually form a uh, new function. It's called the inverse function. And this is how you do it. You take all the points on, in, in the function f of x, and you switch them. So, if f of 2 equals 4, when you switch it, 4 goes to 2. We say f inverse of 4 equals 2. If f of negative 2 is 5, we switch it, and we say f inverse of 5 is negative 2. <clears throat> so what is f inverse of 5? f inverse of 5 is the value of x for which y is 5. Let's do some more. If f of 0 equals 3, then f inverse of 3 equals 0. So what is f inverse of 3? It's the value of x when y is 3. Um, f of 1 equals 2, f inverse of 2 equals 1. So what is f inverse of 2? It's the, it's the value of x when y is 2. It's 1. So if, if you have a point a going to b on f of x, then you'd have b going to a on f inverse. So in other words, if f of a equals b, then f inverse of b will equal a, and that's the definition of the inverse function. It sounds a bit complicated, but it's really not. All it's saying is that we switch the variables x, x and y. Anyway, um, so let, let, look at these two problems here. Remember what f of 2 is? f of 2 is the value of y when x is 2. In this case, using this table here, what's f of 2? f of 2 would be uh, 4. Don't get that confused with f inverse of 2. Well, what we've been saying is f inverse of 2 is the value of x when y is 2. So, so what is the value of x when y is 2? It's 1, right? Or you could also say f inverse of 2 is 1. A couple more things. Would you be too surprised if I told you that the, um, the domain of the uh, inverse function, the domain of f inverse, is the range of f? Because when you switch x and y, the domain of, uh, the, domain of the inverse function is, is gotten from the range of the function. And also the range of the inverse function would be the domain of f, right? And here's something called the inverse function property. It just basically says if you look at the composition of a function with its inverse function, for all x you get back to where you started. That should make sense. For example, what's f of f inverse of 5? What's f of f inverse of 5? You first find f inverse of 5, which is negative 2. Then you find f of negative 2, and you get 5 back. This is why we say f of f inverse of 5 is 5. What's f, inver f inverse of f of 2? You first find f of 2 and you get 4, then you find f inverse of 4 and you get 2. That's why we say f inverse of f of 2 is equal to 2. This table here that um, it tells you the percent of sunlight that penetrates a certain number of feet below the, the sea level of the ocean, say. So p of 100 would be the percent of sunlight that penetrates 100 feet below the surface. So when, when, when h or x is 100, the percentage is 1.5%. You see how this table works? So what would p inverse of 2.6 be? Remember, p inverse of 2.6 is the value of x when y equals 2.6. So you go over to when y is 2.6, and the p inverse of 2.6 becomes 80 feet. What's p inverse of p of 250 feet? You, you should know from what we just said, that's 250 feet, but you could first find p of 250 feet and get 0.035%, and then find p inverse of that, get back to 250 feet. 
Similarly, P of P inverse of 7.2% uh, is 7.2%. Here's a sneaky one. See if you can figure this out. What's P inverse of 100? It's the value of X when Y is 100. Now, Y equal 100 is not on the, on the table, but think about it. 100% of the sunlight penetrates, wouldn't it have to be the surface? That would have to be the surface of the ocean. So that's the answer, zero. Pretty sneaky, huh? All right, let, let's, talk about, um, let's talk about graphs for a bit. Which of these graphs is a function? The answer, number two, number three. Okay, which of these functions is one-to-one? -one? Well, it turns out one-to-one -one means for every y there's one x. This is not one-to-one -one because look at y equals zero, for example. You have 2 going to 0, you have 0 going to 0, and you have negative 2 going to 0. So this is definitely not 1 to 1. This one is, however, since every y value is only used once. So um, there's a nice test for that. It's called the horizontal line test. It's a lot like the vertical line test. Remember, the vertical line test says if you can draw one vertical line that hits the graph more than once, it's not a function. Well, the horizontal line test says if you can draw one horizontal line, that, that hits the graph more than once, then it's not one-to-one. -one. So you can draw a horizontal line here that hits it more than once. Not one-to-one. -one. This one is, though. Okay, let's keep on going. Well, let's, let's look at this graph. First question is, find f of 2. Remember what that is? Value of y when x is 2. Looks like 4. What's f inverse of 2? f inverse of 2 is the value of x when y is 2. Looks like 1, doesn't it? What's f inverse of f of negative 2? By the inverse function property, it's negative 2. What's f of f inverse of 3? That's 3. What's the domain of, of uh, f inverse? That's the range of f, which would be about 0.3 to 8, I think. And what's the range of f inverse? That's the domain of f, which looks like about negative 2 to 8. Here, here's a nice little, little problem. How would you sketch the graph of the inverse function here? Well, to sketch the graph of the inverse function, let's, let's go down here for a second. Same graph, I've, I've sketched the graph of the inverse function for you. What do you do? You switch the x and y coordinates, right? So negative 2.3 becomes a point, point 0.3, negative 2. 0, 1, when you switch, becomes point 1, 0. 1, 2 becomes a point 0.21. 2, 2, 4 becomes a point 0.42. 3, 8 becomes the point 8, 3. If you connect the dots and do a graph, this is the graph of the inverse function. Then that's how I would suggest you do it. I suggest what you do is, is find some points on f, switch the coordinates, and then connect the dots. But you do notice some in, an in, interesting property here. The graph of f inverse is symmetric with f across the line y equals x, isn't it? It's a reflection of the graph of f across y equals x. That's what this says. Okay, let's do one more thing. Let's look at this um, function here. 4 minus 2x cubed. Is, it, is f1 one, one, to, 1 to 1? Well, I think if you graph the function, you should know how to graph it by hand, actually. It's just a translation of x cubed. It looks like it's 1 to 1. It passes the horizontal line test. Okay, <clears throat> without finding the formula for f inverse, what is f inverse of 20? That's the value of x when y equals 20. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set y equal to 20 and solve this equation for x. When you do that, you get x equals negative 2. So therefore, f, inver f inverse of 20 is negative 2. Okay, in this last one, we're going to find the inverse function. Remember how you find the inverse function? Let's say, instead of using f of x, let's use y equals 4 minus 2x cubed. Don't you switch x and y to find the inverse? So let, let's do that. Let, let's, let's switch x and y in this equation and, and write x equals 4 minus 2y cubed. Then all we have to do is solve for y. So you would subtract 4. Now you would divide by negative 2, we get this, I'm going to rewrite this, move the negative up to the top and write it like this, <clears throat> take the cube root, you get this, so it's the cube root of 4 minus x over 2. And that's what we're going to call the inverse function. See? Okay, the last thing we're going to do is verify that these two functions are inverses of each other by using the inverse function property. Uh, I only have a few seconds left, so let, let me just do part of it for you. You look at f, f of f inverse of x, that becomes f of the cube root of 4 minus x over 2, which, uh, then what does f do? 4 minus 2 times the cube of this, whatever you give it. Cube and the cube root undo each other, so you just get this. The 2's cancel, and then when you use the distributive law, you get x. Okay, you, you, you can check the other side. Why don't you hit the pause button and check the other, other side. 
All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.